Here we go back again with another video and today we're going to chat about what Sunderland can do in the summer. Which players would you want to keep? Which players should we let go? Which players are you sitting on the fence about? Should we keep Dodds, Proctor, Speakman? Let's have a good old chat about the whole situation and what should we do in the last two games of the season? Because let's face it, it's been a very disappointing season. It has for me, very disappointing season. We had parts at the beginning of the season. The first third of the season, it looked not too bad, but it's faded away tamely. Absolutely shocking over the last so many months, to be honest, hasn't it? I think I think most Sunderland fans can think to themselves, yes, I know we're all happy we're out of League One. But, could very easily end up back in League One. If we keep going the way we're going, touch would we don't. It's not all doom and gloom. We've got some good youngsters in this team, some good players in this side, but we do need a really big, good summer if we want to progress and try and go and show a bit of ambition. Do the owners have any ambition? The five-year plan? How many years has it been? Three to four years. Now, we are a section of the, of, of the fans who are thinking the owners... Bought the club for quite cheap, reasonably cheap in the big scheme of things to do with the championship club. Championship clubs do tend to go up 50, 60 million pounds. That kind of price tag, let me know what your thoughts are. You know, these are getting quite cheap. Are they buying a bunch of young youngsters in to get them in the shop window eventually and, and make a bit of profit for themselves and then they're going to sell the club eventually at some point and make profit on the club and then head off into the sunset? Is, is, that, is that side of the coin? Or... Are they, do, they, do they have this five-year plan? Do they really believe in what they're doing? Do they really believe they're going to turn this club into a home fortress, which is miles away from being that at this moment in time? Are they going to be able to attract a good head coach in the summer? Are they going to get good players in? Are they going to change the model slightly and get some experience in? Are they going to learn from the mistakes and the, and, you know, the, the, the sort of... The, the way they've done things this season by not getting in the striker haven't been addressed for so many windows even though yes we do have Samido yes we do have Bursto on loan yes we do have Rushin and Mienda scored three goals three goals is absolutely shocking you cannot polish a turd you know in that window of things three goals from our strikers is an absolutely pittance of a haul throughout the whole of the season. Nobody can, can, can argue the fact. It's awful. And I bet other teams are looking in and thinking, how has this happened? Why have you let this come to the situation where you haven't got an experienced striker or a striker who's actually coming through with some experience and scored plenty of goals in either... League One coming up or Championship, mid-Championship, already scored plenty of goals. Or, or one coming down from the Premier League who scored quite a few. You know, it, 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 it's beggars belief that we've got the likes of Burstow at the club. The young lad, I wish him all the best in the future, but he has to go as soon as possible. We're not going to, that's obviously we're not going to keep him. You know, so we got him. we got Luis Semedo. Never scored a goal. Now, if it's, now, look at, out of all the players we've got up top, Job has scored the most goals, but not from a striker's position. But he has scored a few goals this season. So we were thinking, you know, with, with the playoffs just, you know, not far ahead a, a few games ago. And with relegation possibly uh, being dragged down a few games ago, it could have gone either way. So probably it wasn't the time to play Samedo. It wasn't the time to play the likes of Mienda being shipped up to Scotland. Scotland, Mienda's only played one game for Hibs. What an absolute waste of time that was. What was the point of Mienda going to fucking Hibs to have one start in the whole? It's sometimes, I just, you can't, you can't make it up, can you? You can't make it up. One start. He may as well have stayed at the club and give him a run of games at the club. As soon as Rushen got injured, put him in there, give him three or four games to see what he was like. One start for Hibs. What a waste of a loan that is. And obviously we got Rushen two goals. And he's been injured quite a bit. And 
Nah, we, we don't know. We don't know actually what's going on with Rush. We don't know if he's happy, if he's sad, whether he wants to stay, whether he wants to go. We don't know. But three goals out of all those strikers this season is a pittance of a haul. And, and Semedo needs to go out. I would play Semedo now last two games. I'd have dragged Mienda back and played him, but obviously we can't. Burstow is an absolute waste of time playing Burstow now. Complete waste of time even starting Burstow now. The last two games, we need to look at some of these players and give some other players a start. We're not going to get relegated. We are, we're not going to. It's, just, it's gone. The season's gone. Now we need to look hard. A hard long look at some of these players. Sticking Semedo from the start against Watford. Let's see what he's capable of doing. We know he hasn't done diddly squat all season. But he's supposed to be one of these players that could be good in six months time. Give him two games to the end of the season. What else have we got to lose? Pointless playing burst door, you know, Russian's injured and Meander shipped up to Scotland to sit on the bench. What a waste. Four strikers there. For me, probably none of them are good enough. We need to go out and spend some cash. Yes, I do think Clark will go. I do think Clark will go. Spend that money on a couple of strikers if we have to spend that money. Definitely on a couple of strikers. So that's the strikers department going. Now that's just the biggest disappointment this season is the striker department. I think we all knew when we got these bits of kids in that they weren't going to be good enough. I think we knew early days it wasn't going to work with these four strikers that had come to this club. If Semedo does not the next two games, if it looks like it's got nothing in the locker, who's going to buy him? So it looks like he's going to go on loan all next season. I'd be, prepare, I'd be prepared to maybe... There's probably none of them are strikers, to be fair. But I'd be prepared maybe to keep me in the next season over Semedo and put Semedo out on loan. But to be fair, if we get two strikers in, then put, put in Mienda, I just I, It wouldn't bother me one single bit if all four of those strikers were gone in the summer and we brought in a couple of good quality strikers. That's the striker department. Goalkeepers. We'll talk about the goalkeepers. You know, we've got Patterson who's wanted by several teams, allegedly. Now, I'd be happy to keep Patterson next season. Bass Bishop can go. Richardson and Young. You know, you could keep the likes of Richardson, obviously, for the under-23s. You could promote him in behind Patterson. And Young could go at the under-23s or under-21s or whatever it is. And then, or you could bring another experienced Goalkeeper, I mean, to really push Patterson hard next season. But I think Bass will be on his way. And Bishop, I just, I'd be happy. I'd be easy to let him go as well. So there's them ones gone. Now we go into, you know, you've got the likes of, no, we'll go straight to the, the, the coach situation. Dodds has been there ever since flipping Speakman's been there. Now, if I was KLD and I'm sitting up there thinking, how am I going to get myself promoted this season? How are we going to get into the playoffs? How are we going to get into the, the Premier League? I'd ship Speakman out. I'd ship Proctor out. And unfortunately, I'd, get probably, I'd probably do a clean sheet. I'd get rid of the lot. Get rid of the lot. Get rid of Dodds, Proctor and Speakman. If Dodds, right, Dodds, for me now, has got to start playing some other players. No point playing Dak. Dak is gone. He has to go. 16 games in the whole season. And a lot of them off the bench. One goal. What a waste of a wage Bradley Dack has been. A waste of an absolute wage. He has got to be let go in the summer. Simple as. What a waste. Absolutely. And do not play Dak at all. If Dodds plays Dak the next two games, then he's absolutely clueless. Why are we playing the same system? Why are we doing the same thing over and over again? Let's do something different. Yes, the defence has got a bit better, but we're not creating anything. Nothing at all. You know, the problem with Sunderland is, by the time we get the ball, by the time we get to the, the, the opposition's penalty box, it's took 10 minutes. It's rubbish. You're never going to break down a team. Taking 10 minutes to get from one end of the box to the other. 10 bloody minutes. You're passing the ball sideways, sideways. I mean, uh, Patterson gets the ball. He's instructed, obviously, to put the ball down, give it to Ballard. Ballard gives it 0-9, 0-9. I pass it to Pembelia. Pembelia back to Luke 9 Back to, to Ballard. Ballard over to Trey Hume. Hume might move it forward to Dan Neal. Unfortunately, he's injured. Dan Neal, back to Ballard. Then, then eventually, eventually, we'll give it to Clark. 
But by the time Clark gets the ball, Clark is the most effective player when they are going on a break, a counter-attack or a break, quick break. Running it at defenders that are backing up. By the time Clark gets the ball, all the defenders are lined up. You know, they're all their midfielders, they know what's going to happen behind the ball. Got Clark's up in a chance. You know, end of the day, he's a good player. And he, I think he'd be gone in the summer. But by the time he gets the ball, you've got 11 players behind the ball from the opposition's team. And that's just a waste of time. He can of get past three or four players. You know, he's best. Quick break. Get the keeper. Straight out. Move it on. Break. Try and break the team down quick as possible. Get him behind them. He cannot when there's 11 players behind the ball. We're just too slow, too stagnant, and very boring, I mean, to be fair. Anyway, I'm digressing a little bit. Defenders, yes, well, defenders. So, yeah, we'll get rid of Dodds, get rid of Puckter, get rid of Speakman. KLD, if you're going to bring someone like Will still in, then bring his back room staff in, and, and you know, his own, his own coaches in. Right, Silt injured, he's going to be staying at the club. Huggins injured, he's going to be staying at the club. Sirkin injured, going to be staying at the club. Three injury-prone players that are out, and hopefully they'll all come back. Because I do like all three of those players, to be honest. Adji Lessie, injury-prone, back. I do like him as well. Hopefully he'll stay injury-free, because he could be a good player. All of them players there, decent players. Yelder, on the fence. I'm not quite sure about this lad. For me, he wouldn't be my first choice. He'd be, be in the, back in the pe pecking order behind certain Huggins, Silt. And a lessie. Oh, nine. It's not a defender. Oh, that's a, that's a hard one, isn't it? Look, oh, nine's a hard one because he's not a defender. And I'd be so tempted to have him as a holding midfielder. But if, if we have any ambition to get promoted next season, we're probably going to need some better quality. A better quality midfielder, should we say. But if Evans, for me, massive injury... I like him as a captain. I like them at Sunderland. But, you know, I so, saw so. Let's face it, we, we had him in League One, got promoted, and he never really saw much of the championships. I don't really know. I think he's obviously past his best, isn't he, Evans? He's past his best. For me, I'd let him go. Let Evans go. i let Dak go. And I'd bring some experienced players in to replace those two, but a younger generation of experienced players. You know, maybe he's 26, 27, that kind of age to replace them. Maybe he's even 29, you know, the one sort of thing. That I put. Me, yeah, I'd, I'd get rid of him. Anyway, back to the, the, the defenders. Ballard, obviously keep. Triantos, you know, maybe he's on loan next season. Lugo 9, he's the one because I do like him. I think he's a hell of a bloke. But I don't think he is really... What we need if we want to progress in defence going forward. We need a proper centre-back in there alongside Ballard. Somebody who it's his game, coming through the ranks, growing with the age. That's his position. Luke 9 does a good job, but makes too many errors. Big mistakes get made and it always seems to be Luke 9 So for me, he's too busy grappling people, pulling people down. You know, I'd, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be happy... To put him as centre midfielder, a utility player on the bench, or let go of one, one of those three. You know, he might, not, he might not like it, just my opinion. Ballard, maybe he's captain next season. Then we've got the likes of midfielders. Dan Neal, he'll probably going to be going. He's injured now to the end of the season. We probably won't see him again now. Probably won't see him now till the end of the season. But when being Sunderland through and through, I'd be hoping he'd be willing to stay at the club another season. Touch wood. Unless the big big guns coming from Equa, jury's out. I think he's a bit, a bit weak. Is that right? A bit soft, bit weak, bit too nice, too nice. There's something about Equa that he has got something about him. I'd be willing to give him another season, but for me, he wouldn't be the first choice on the on, on the pitch. If we get somebody else in with good experience in Equa, could be someone who could learn from the experienced player, and maybe he's on the bench. That's just my opinion. Adil, I'm not really a massive fan of Adil either. His corners were shocking at the weekend. And again, I wouldn't be bothered if Adil went. I wouldn't be bothered if Matete went. I wouldn't be bothered if Evans went. I wouldn't be bothered if, to be fair, if Job went. You know, I, it's a bit tough. It's a bit harsh. I like Job. I do like him. There's potential there. <clears throat> we may need that, that summer to really rejuvenate himself and, 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 and find that spring in his step again. 
and also the correct position for the lad. So either way, if we if somebody came in with a, a lot of money for Job, then I'd let him go. Roberts, he's been really poor this season, Robertson. Congratulations on, on being a dad, but he's been poor. For me, next season's make a break for Roberts. If Roberts can it shine next season, then he's got to be let go as well. Clark's on his way. Rig, keep Rig. I'd play Rig. I'd even start, I'd play Watson at the weekend. I'd even give Watson some game time. Get him in either on the bench and bring him on for 30 minutes and then maybe start him for the last home game of the season along with Rig, you know, Bar. Again, lightweight, I'd let Barr go. Benetti, I'd rather have Benetti than Barr, but I think Benetti is going to be going as well. Mundo, oh. the jury's out with Mundo because it's his first season. He hasn't been here very long. We'll give him the next season, definitely give him the next season. We'll see how it goes. Embledon, I'm easy either way. Poor lad, son and through and through. I do like Embledon. I wish him all the best in the future, I really do. But I think some players are constantly injury prone and maybe he's, he might not be top end of the championship. Styles, probably let him go. So there we go. Anyway, there's a little rundown of the players who I'd keep and let go. Let me know. Do you, do you agree? I mean, no one takes any notice of me. It doesn't matter what I think, to be fair. I just my little, it's a little bit of a little video on what I think on certain players. You know, the ones that do go, I wish them all the best. You know, they probably tried the best in bad circumstances. I don't believe. The way we play football, underdogs, really brings out the best in some of these players. And that's the saving grace for one or two of these players. Because if we've got a good quality head coach in, with a little bit of something about them, a little bit of some tactics, some, you know, they can change it up a little bit. Bring in strikers who actually get some sort of, you know, help and assists and, and, and bring strikers into the game. I mean... Football is about scoring goals. It's about scoring goals. Yes, clean sheets. Definitely clean sheets. But with our defence, we can't keep many clean sheets. And when we do keep clean sheets, we can't score goals. So, so for me, keeping clean sheets, not being able to score goals, we don't always keep clean sheets because I, I, think, I think we have, like, again, as much as I don't want to be on Luke or Nine's back, I just don't think... He is that. For me, centre mid, central defensive midfielder in front of the two centre backs could be the position for Luke 09. And we'll see how he goes for that. For me, I'd rather bring in a quality centre back to, 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 re, to replace Luke 09. That's just my opinion. But there we go. That's just a quick rundown of who I think is going to come in. And I think Dodds shouldn't miss a trick. He's got to do something different the next two games. Not a one trick pony. Yes, done it against Leeds. Done it against West Brom, but you've gone through, you know, I don't know how many games you've been in charge now, roughly 10, you've lost quite a few, I mean, you've only, you've only won one or two max, if just one, I'm not sure, but, you know, it's, it's not good enough, we want to see more from Dodds, the football's boring, there's no point Dodds sitting, coming out after the game and saying, it's the worst, it's boring football, you're the one who's controlling it, you're the one who's creating the boring football, this is your training, you giving them the instructions. You clearly telling them what to do. They wouldn't do the absolute opposite. So it's coming from you, Dodd. So, you know, I want a breath of fresh air this summer. I want a new head coach, a new manager, breath of fresh air, bring his backroom staff in, bring some players in of his choice. Not Speakman's choice. Let Speakman be in, in control of the youngsters, finding gems, bringing them in. But let the manager... And our head coach have the choice of bringing first teamers in. Players that can come straight into the side with experience. It may have to spend some money. We're not saying break the bank. We're not saying go and, and smash and, and, and get, you know, fall, fall, fall foul of the, the FPP. We're just saying do it right. The get balance has got to be right. You make the money off Jack Clark, you spend the money off Jack Clark and you bring in the experienced players. Don't start bringing players in before the manager comes in. What's the point of that? We need that addressing straight away. The head coach manager wants addressing straight away. And don't give Dodds it. Because that's recipe for relegation next season. I'm sick to death of, of, of hearing what Speakman wants. 
I want a head coach, a manager in, that's got some balls, got his own brain, his own mind, and let him decide what's going on. Not let Spickman fucking decide. Anyway, there we go. Thanks for watching. Take care. Let me thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let's do something different next two, next two games. Let's start some players that haven't had much game time to see what they've got in the last two. You know, in the window. Not, not just play a job every single game on all the time. Let's get maybe Watson in. Give him a start. You know, if you have to, Semedo up top. Put Job on the bench. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. Subscribe if you're new. And we'll see you for the match preview later on in the week. So again, just let me know who would you keep and who would you get rid of. I know that people wouldn't keep many players, but we cannot, you know, we can't get rid of them all. We're not going to just change the whole... We, we know, you know, I know, we're not going to get rid of them all. We might get rid of three or four, I think, max, and the rest are there. So we've got to build on what's there. That core of youngsters got to build with the experience, with the head coach, and, and, and hopefully he'll get more out of them than what Dodds has done. See you later. Thank you.